The new Mac Pro has been everywhere on the news lately, and the big talking point is just how ridiculously expensive it is. But don't worry, I have a solution for you that's significantly cheaper, and it's going to perform really well. So let's get into it. Hey guys, Tiago here with Classical Technology. Thank you for joining me for another video. Subscribe if you enjoy my content, smash that like button, leave a comment below if you've ever used a Mac, or if you do maybe content creation and you would even consider using a Mac, or if you're just gonna stick to PCs. In this video, I'm gonna show you a build that I did that's significantly cheaper than even the base Mac Pro while being a lot faster in a lot of different applications. Now, of course, if you're gonna use Apple native software like Final Cut Pro or something like that, you're kind of stuck with that ecosystem. And if you use something else like maybe Adobe Premiere or any of the Adobe products, I think you could find a lot better performance for a lot cheaper on a comparable Windows computer. Now, of course, if you're a gamer like me, no question you have to go to a PC because the Mac just has no support. I don't care how expensive or powerful that Mac Pro is, it's never going to be able to play Crisis correctly like a PC would. Now, over the last few years where Apple hasn't really upgraded its Mac Pro line, many, many Apple enthusiasts have jumped shipped over to Windows and they saw that, hey, Windows 10 is really not that bad. I used to use Macs a long time ago when I used to do music and different things like that. Um, and the aesthetics were all as nice, the integration and optimization, of course, were all as good. But Windows has really, really improved a lot in the last few years. Of course, if you're gonna be gaming, there's no contest, but for content creation and even everyday use, I really think you're not going to be able to beat a well spec out PC just because it's going to be so much cheaper for a lot faster hardware. So if we take the base Mac Pro, which is about 5,999, it's only going to come with a 256 gigabyte SSD. That's too little. It's only going to come with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Eh, that's okay for content creation, but for that price, that's definitely too little. And it's only an 8-core Xeon processor that's too little. So that's obviously not really a very good value. Um, you know, in fact, it's a terrible value. For that, you're really paying for a lot of the design and just sort of the integration. Um, so I really don't think it's worth it. But if we take a computer like this one that I'm showing you here now, instead of an eight core, we have a 14 core processor, which is almost twice the power. So it's gonna be much, much faster. Instead of 32 gig of RAM, we're gonna have 64 gigs of RAM. And instead of the AMD graphics card that comes in the Mac Pro, the 580X, which isn't really anything too special, we're gonna have a 2080 RTX card in this computer. And of course, instead of a 256 gigabyte SSD, we're gonna have a one terabyte SSD, plus you can add as many as you want and still be well within that price limit. So as you can see, the specs are often nearly double what the Mac Pro can offer. And if you're doing a program like Adobe Photoshop or you know Adobe Premiere, these aren't specifically optimized for Macs, so you're gonna get much better performance with this better hardware here hands down. And Windows has also gotten much more dependable and reliable in the last few years, so it's really not a bad proposition. So a PC with almost twice the specs of a Mac Pro, you can get it almost at half the price. So that's, you know, that's a terrific performance value. Now you can really build a PC in any way that you want. You can even change the processor up. You can use, you know, the Ryzen 3950X, Ryzen 3900. You can use an Intel processor. You can use an Nvidia or AMD GPUs. You can really choose whatever's gonna work for your workflow best. For example, some programs really take advantage of certain hardware better, like maybe, you know, Adobe Premiere does work better with NVIDIA. Um, and now maybe Adobe Premiere works better with AMD CPUs while before it was Intel. So that way you're always really flexible. But if these programs aren't optimized for the Mac Pro, you're gonna be stuck with whatever hardware you have without too much of a route for upgradability. Of course, the Mac Pro does have its optimizations in its ecosystem, but we're talking about huge price premiums here. You can almost build you know, two similar computers for the price of one Mac Pro. Now, I'm not too sure if that software is worth it unless you're really just using Final Cut Pro. And the kicker here is that software is usually generally very well optimized for Apple's lower performing computers. So I don't really even think you need something as powerful as a Mac Pro to have really smooth performance in something like that. You know, it's a lot of overkill. Maybe if you're doing a 3D rendering or some type of really, really high-end professional work, then yes, then I could see you getting a much more expensive Mac Pro, especially if that software is optimized for 
Apple. But in general, if you're doing work on software that's on both Windows and Mac OS, and it's not really particularly optimized for either, you're definitely gonna get a much better bang for your buck in terms of hardware on the PC. And if you really need that Apple operating system, I mean, you can build a really powerful PC, you can even turn it into a Hackintosh possibly, and you'll have enough money left over for a MacBook Pro compared to buying one Mac Pro. So you can really have the best of two worlds there. That's how big the price difference is. Now here, we're really talking about mainly performance for the dollar. If you like Apple because of the aesthetics and different things of that nature and the integration, then there's not much you have to think about. You just have to sort of go with what you really want. But if you really stop and think, you're always gonna be able to build a significantly specced out PC for significantly cheaper. Now it is true as you start stepping up the price of the Mac Pro, different configurations, um, then the PCs aren't quite as competitive. Other people have specced out a really expensive Mac Pro and then they go see that a comparable Dell workstation costs the same or more. So it's not always apples to apples, but I do think that the entry model, which would be anywhere from maybe 6,000 with a couple of upgrades, maybe like around that $8,000 range. I really do think you can build a much better PC for that price. Now, if you're gonna spend, you know, 20, 30,000 on it, then it's a whole different ball game. You know, we're not really talking about that. It may be better than a PC at that point because just because of, there's a lot of proprietary hardware in the Mac Pro that may be better optimized for that type of software, but in terms of the more entry level in that sort of six to $10,000 range, I really do think that you can build a very, very competitive PC in terms of performance and one that's definitely gonna beat it on price. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. I wanna know if you guys ever consider the Mac Pro or even any Apple computer and what you think of it compared to Windows. And I'll see you guys on the next video.